Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 4th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Cisco released a critical update for its RV110W, RV130W and RV215W routers. These are routers that you typically find in small businesses and maybe some home offices, typically sold via like uh, Office Depot and the like. And the vulnerability can be exploited if you left your web-based admin interface exposed. The existence of the vulnerability was actually already announced late last year at the Geekpwn conference. Shouldn't be terribly difficult to exploit, so something you certainly should take care of quickly. And then yet again, please block access to any web-based admin interface from outside your own network. And Adobe released an update for Cold Fusion. Now, essentially the nature of the bug here is that an attacker could upload files that are then executed, but you have to do a number of fundamental things wrong with file uploads if you are vulnerable to this particular issue. First of all, of course, you have to have a site that does allow file uploads. The file uploads have to be uploaded into a folder that's web accessible. That's always a big no-no. And then, of course, uh, you have to allow the upload of a file that does have an executable extension like .cfm, .cfml, or .cfc, well, ASPX, uh, sort of your typical cold fusion extensions. The real bug here is that if you are checking the MIME type of the file, well, that's where the bad part happens. Even if you do check the MIME type, well, it can be bypassed and executable code can be uploaded. This is a very common problem, not just with Cold Fusion, that developers do trust things like Mime Magic and such. These libraries often just check the first few characters in the file and ultimately may not prevent execution of any code coming later in the file. This has, for example, been an issue sometimes uh, with PHP. If you're uploading images and then summary in image code, the, you'll, you'll find some PHP code. So remember, whenever you allow a user speak attacker to upload files to your web server, make sure they end up outside your document root and are not directly accessible. And in our Defending Web Application class, we actually have an entire little chapter that just deals with this problem and all the things that can go wrong and how to prevent them. Apparently, this vulnerability has already been exploited and uh, given that it's fairly straightforward to exploit, I don't doubt that attackers are already using it. And Mikhail Gillespie did tweet about an interesting ransomware variant that in its ransomware sort of claims to come from ProtonMail. ProtonMail, of course, a well-respected anonymous email system that does encrypt all email it receives for you and provides fairly slick sort of web-based and app-based access to your email. But in this particular case, apparently the attacker set himself up with the secure server dash u at protonmail.com address and then makes the ransom note kind of sound like protonmail is actually the organization encrypting the system which of course is not true it appears that the ransomware spreading with this ransom note is guaranteed decrypt. If you are affected by it, there is sort of a sliver of hope for you in that this particular ransomware only encrypts about the first 11,000 bytes of your file. And miscreants trying to impersonate eBay actually found a pretty neat trick to use an official eBay page to deposit their phishing form. The trick here is that when you are selling an article on eBay, the description to the article is actually included as an iframe. And this particular description is served from eBay DESC, that's short for eBay description.com. So what you can do is you 
sell an article, you post the description, but then instead of sending the victim to the article page, you're sending them to just the URL where the description is being stored. And then of course you have a pretty neat looking eBay phishing page. The only thing helping here is that eBay desk is not necessarily the URL that a user may expect from eBay, but it is actually a valid eBay page. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.